Hi, I'm Suzanne McCluskey, your host of This Week in Jackson. We've got another exciting week in Jackson, and tonight my guest is Dave from West Winds. How are you? Awesome, Suzanne. How are you doing? Good, good. Um, so you've got uh, a lot of really cool things coming up. I just watched you on a video online earlier tonight. Tell me about uh, your project. It's called The Revelation of June Paul, and it's a live storytelling experience. So what we're trying to do is take something that would typically only be done in a big budget feature film or a novel or something like that, and we're trying to parse it for oratory. So I stand up and I tell this long story about a time traveler who's um, essentially trying to avoid Armageddon, and he's Aren't battling, I? yeah, kind of the forces of you know religious wackos on one hand and then scientific psychos on the other, and he gets cut in the middle. And it's, I, did I read correctly that it's like a mixed media theatrical? Yeah. What does that mean? Okay, so we have three big giant screens that are part of the performance. Okay. And on the central main screen, we have um, essentially 90 second bumpers that divide each of the acts, a countdown. They're done with motion graphics in the Adobe suite. And, um, you know, we, we take a bunch of stock footage, you know, from the Internet Archive or iStockVideo.com and, and splice them together to try and, uh, evoke an atmosphere because it's such a weird thing telling a story live and time travel and sci-fi is not really uh, not really the normal kind of thing anyway right. we want to do at least you know set up the atmosphere somewhat with video so is it like a is there like a big screen behind the person yeah, presenting yeah, yeah. is it is it a solo pre uh, presentation or is it like yeah. a whole group yes it's me talking for 90 minutes wow. but it's, it's me talking spellbindingly wonderfully for and you, 90 minutes. And you, you sound great, so I can tell it's going to be an awesome <laughs> Yeah, I just came I just came from a performance out in Hillsdale, and, and it was the first one that we did unmiked, so I, I feel like I've been yelling at people for about an hour and a half. Unmiked, yeah. okay. Yeah, we were at the Dawn Theater, and, and it's, it's a pretty good-sized room for no microphone. I feel, I feel proud. Don't you have a... Sh congratulations, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, you're so kind. <laughs> Do you have a show coming up this Friday? Is that yes, right? this Friday night at 6.30 at the JSO. Tickets are five bucks. And a, a big reason that we're doing all of this is to try and raise awareness and funding for different charities that fight human trafficking. So 100% of the proceeds from Friday's event, both the ticket sales and the product sales, go to agencies that fight human trafficking. And there are seven that we're um, uh, highlighting. So Okay, I've yeah. got a, a friend. I just donated money to her cause. She's heading to Africa for a, a sex trafficking mission trip through uh, her church cool. and but I don't know what that means like uh, what like her actually going there I don't know what she's doing I was just like here's some money sure you're um, my buddy here's some cash <laughs> like, yeah I believe in the cause I believe in you uh, so what what does your funds do to help yeah. Well, they do a number of different things. Uh, any of the different charities that work with sex trafficking usually work with it on a number of different levels. So there's a lot that work with prevention, like Children's Hope Chest is at a group that we're uh, really close with. They get all the money from our product sales, books, DVDs, T-shirts, that kind of thing. And th they put a lot of their efforts in prevention. So they go out and they find girls that would be at risk, which are typically orphan girls or girls who have just re you know, kind of turned 15, 16, and now being kicked out of orphanages. Okay. And they kind of know the ploys that the bad guys use to scoop those girls up and get them involved in trafficking. And they interrupt those ploys, shine light on those ploys, and sort of exploit the exploiters so the girls know what to avoid and how to do it. And then they also usually have a rescue portion. Mm -hmm. So if girls are stuck and, you know, they've been sold into sexual slavery perhaps, or maybe a lot of them are service industries, you know, massage parlors or, or right. restaurant workers, something like that. And so they'll have uh, like hotlines, um, websites set up, ways for people to, to get out if they're stuck. And they typically know the places where those people are employed or where they're where they're holed up so they can advertise or slip business cards or sometimes pose as customers and get the information to the girls and then okay. you know kind of get out. If it's a church group that's going, what they're probably doing is going to minister in orphanages or something like that with girls that would be at risk and okay. trying to remind them that they're loved, that they have some basic human dignity and value, and that there's options for them other than feeling like they've got to go down this very dark and scary road when they turn 11 or something. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. they, they don't have very many options. I mean, and so uh, your organizations, what countries, is, are, are any of them in the United States? I've seen yeah, that, several that are we've in Michigan. got yeah. uh, a lot of issues right here around, uh, well, home. 
Yeah, absolutely. So we, we've been working a lot with the, uh, the Southern Michigan Human Trafficking Task, Task Force and also the Hillsdale Regional Human Trafficking Task Force, um, Sari Bari, which is a group that's based out of Spring Arbor and takes people from Spring Arbor over to India to combat wow. human trafficking. Um, and we have a fellow at our church who's a professor, Jeremy Norwood, he's a prof over at Spring Arbor, and he's doing some of his doctoral research on human trafficking in Michigan, okay. and specifically in the areas within 50 miles of Jackson. So there's a lot of really kind of frightening stuff once you peel back the surface, and it's not not all just India or Russia, a lot of it's right here. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's scary. Like, I mean, just when you're reading the news, like finding out people, uh, what your own neighbors and coworkers are doing, like it's, I mean, there's what a are, lot of- What are your coworkers doing? I don't even want, I don't even want to talk about it. My coworkers are great. <laughs> no, uh, but it, it is, it is. Uh, I mean, you never know who's doing what and mm -hmm. to, to be able to shine some light on it, it's a really serious, important issue that a lot of people are, are blinded by. They don't see that it's going on, so they don't know it's actually happening locally. Um, so I think it's really great that you guys are doing this. Is there something like, uh, what if, okay, so obviously they, people can go to your show and support mm -hmm. you that way, but mm -hmm. you're probably taking donations. Mm -hmm. Is there any volunteer opportunities? Yeah, there are volunteer opportunities. If somebody wants to get in contact with us, they can send an email to info at westwinds.org, or they can call the church office at 750-1111. Okay. And so we're always looking for people to help with <coughs> set up and tear down, people to man booths and product tables. And then also we, all, we always need people to like hand out brochures, um, uh, draw attention to the different displays and stuff that we have in the lobby so they can see what all the opportunities are. And all the different charities that we're supporting are also linked through our website, therevelationofjunepaul.com. And I learned today that in 2013, it will be projected that human trafficking, especially sex trafficking, will be the largest, most lucrative business in the world, outstripping even the arms trade or the drug trade because the product is reusable. So, I mean, this is a heartbreaking statistic. And it's yeah. something that most of us have been ignorant about until very recently. Well, thanks for being so depressing, Dave. <laughs> This has been a real treat. <laughs> well, I like to balance the really depressing crap with, you know, fun time travel stories and, and uh, yeah. try and leverage the one for the other. Well, and it sounds like even if you have no interest in, in the cause, it sounds like it still is going to be a pretty interesting and cool performance oh, yeah. that people should check out. Did you write this yourself? Yeah. Um, you know, my, my background is as a pastor and as a theologian, and lo and behold, most people don't actually care about theology. It's the weirdest thing. They don't read it on vacation. They don't <laughs> read it to their kids. There's no Fifty Shades of the New Testament. I no? mean, it's just not the wow. thing. So I started taking some of what I refer to as the top shelf <laughs> concepts, you know, the really academic kind of heavy work and trying to translate it into the language of normal everyday people, you know, people who watch TV and who bum around on Facebook. I mean, just humans. Yeah. And it seems like fiction is a really good way to do that. And, and the sci-fi construct means you get, you know, to bend a few rules and... Like, well, it's definitely a completely different way of presenting it. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, I think it, it does sound pretty cool. And I was watching your video on your website. It looks like you've got a good group of people involved. Everyone's mm -hmm. really, like, you know, laughing a lot and excited about it. And We're good at laughing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, definitely check that out. I'm going to jump to what's happening this week in Jackson, and then we'll wrap up the video with, uh, well, with your video from the website. But you can check out at therevelationofjunepaul.com, right? Yes, that's right. For more info. Um, so this week we've got a, a lot of really cool stuff going on. I'm only going to run down four of them, but you can check out uh, jacksonopolis.com slash events for more information and events. We've got the JCC film series is taking place on Monday at the Michigan Theater. They're doing uh, Singing in the Rain, and that's featuring uh, Gene Kelly. Check that out at 7 o'clock. The door's open. Movie starts at 7.15. And the cost is four fifty to six fifty, depending on your age and student status. Either way, that's that's a bargain. Um, Thursday night, there's karaoke at Duffy's with DJ Ray. And Duffy's on the corner of Ganson and Waterloo. That starts at nine p.m. And Saturday, January twenty-sixth, we've got Echoes of Pink Floyd. I think I'm actually going to go to this. It sounds really cool with the amazing light show. Um, and that's also at the Michigan Theater. Doors are at 7. Show starts at 8. Tickets are 20 to $25, depending on what seats you're sitting in. And Sunday, there's a photo walk with Travis Stevens, right from jacksonopolis.com. Uh, and he is uh, gathering a group at the Ella Sharp Park. They're meeting at um, the, where are they meeting? 
they're meeting in a parking lot near the, uh, what's the space astro? Um, Jay, you're not helping me at all. <laughs> Uh, yeah. it's, it's on our website. Yep. We'll find it. Okay. So that's, <laughs> rather you have a cell phone, a digital SLR, film camera, disposable camera, iPhone, Android, it doesn't matter what you have. You can check that out. Go for a walk, get some fresh air. And they're meeting at 2 p.m. It's free. We have a location where they're meeting on the website. Oh, Planetarium. Oh, Planetarium. Thank you. Ella Sharp. Didn't I say Ella Sharp? I'll share Planetarium, check that out, and here is the video. Stop talking, Jay. I'm trying to do a live video here. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, Dave. Hey, my pleasure, Suzanne. Thanks for having me. <laughs>